there, aspiring authors, a quick question for you. Have you ever written yourself almost to the dead center of your story and then realized you had no idea how to get to the end? This is a question that a lot of authors ask me when it comes to finishing their story, you know, getting that first draft down. They tend to get really stuck right about the midpoint. A lot of them will even say that, um, you know, it's like standing on the wrong bank of a river. Like you can see the other side. You can see where you want to go and what's going to happen at the ending or the climactic point, but they just don't know how to bridge the gap to get there. Okay. If you've ever experienced anything like that, then this is the episode for you because we are going to talk about how to get from the middle to the end, how to figure out what's going to happen and how to get that manuscript written so that you can move into the editing process. Okay. Okay. And understand this has happened to me before too. In fact, back when I was writing, um, I think it was when I was writing the botanist, I was trying to figure out how to get from where I wanted to be until the ending and I couldn't come up with anything. And so I started thinking about, you know, what could happen that would be a big deal? What could happen that would make everyone super emotional? In that book, I actually went with a character death and I'm not going to tell you who it was in case anybody wants to read it. I don't want to give it away, but, um, doing that really helped to form my story in a big way. It helped increase the stakes for the characters. It helped get the audience um, more attached to the characters. You know, they were, they were with them in that moment of grief and suddenly they had a lot more investment in what was going on in the story and with the characters. So trust me, this sort of thing works. Okay. You definitely want this in your story in order to just, I mean, really you're kind of trying to shred your audience's heartstrings a little bit if you're going with the grief thing. But even if you don't, you know, I'm going to explain why there's going to be something that's really going to be difficult for your characters. And because of that, it's also going to be different, difficult for your audience because they're on this journey with the characters. Okay. They feel what your characters feel. So this is not just an opportunity to finish out your story. Just, you know, figure out something to get to the ending. This is an opportunity to make your story amazing, to really draw in your audience and make them love your characters and love your story. Okay. So let's get into it. Okay. So first we're going to talk about what causes this you know, getting stuck at this point. Most authors would assume that it's because they don't have cool enough plot events worked out or, you know, they don't have enough action going on. Maybe we need to throw some action in there or a major plot twist. And all of that's fine. You can certainly do that, but it's not the lack of that that's actually causing this problem. Okay. I understand why you think it is because that's what most authors lean toward. You know, oh, I just, I don't have a cool enough plot event. I don't know what's going to happen next. Um, obviously we need a plot twist here. I got to come up with something epic, you know, and, and that's kind of what we all default to. I get why you think that that's the case, but really we need to dig, dig a little deeper than that. The real reason you get stuck here in the middle is either because you haven't figured out your turning point, which I will talk about, or, you know, and, and these kind of go hand in hand. Sometimes it's both. You don't know your character well enough to know what they're going to do next, or you haven't figured out their internal framework in enough detail. Now, I'm sure some of you are pushing back against that saying, no, 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 no. I know how my character is going to change. I know my character just fine. I'm still stuck. But here's the thing, guys. There are plenty of stories out there that don't have major plot twists in the second half that don't have tons and tons of action. Okay. They're more low key stories, but they're still fantastic, cohesive, well-formed stories. Okay. So you definitely can use that. I'm going to talk about using those things, but I don't want you to start from the outside and work your way in. And by what I mean by that is I don't want you to start with coming up with some random plot twist. Okay. All that's doing is trying to force your characters and your story into that random plot twist, which probably has nothing to do with the story you're actually telling. You're just trying to force it to move along. Okay. And that's not the best way to do it. You're going to end up with a really random and disjointed story if you do that. Okay. Now that's not to say that we're not going to talk about throwing some major events and plot twists in there, but they have to come from the inside out. Okay. You have to form them correctly from the correct center. And that is going to be from your character motivations and your character's internal arc or their internal framework. Okay. So I'm going to give you basically four tips here for things to consider really. And all I want you to do is to write down each one of these and journal on them. And as you relax your brain and start to journal on, you know, what you could possibly do to fulfill each of these questions, something will come to you and you will figure out how to get from the middle of your story to the end. I promise you. Okay. So the first thing to consider is, um, you know, once we get to three quarters of the way through the story, so between the midpoint and the end, we're ramping up 
toward the climactic point, okay? So we do need to be accelerating. That doesn't mean that we need to have high action, everyone needs to start punching each other or running back and forth all over the place. It just more means that the stakes need to go up. Now, like I said, that definitely can take the form of a plot twist or some action, but it doesn't have to. You just need to make sure that the stakes are higher, okay? So let's give an example. If we go with a romance example, like um, say Pride and Prejudice, the reason the stakes get higher three quarters of the way through the film is because Lydia takes off with Wickham and that means that Elizabeth's family is going to be shamed and Elizabeth doesn't think she has any chance at that point of having a relationship with Darcy, okay? It's not a huge action sequence. It's not um, a huge, huge, I mean, I guess you could call it a plot twist, sure, but it's not like let's throw a sparkly unicorn in there or let's have everyone get into a fist fight, okay? It has to just raise the stakes based on what the story already is, which is she's opening up to the idea of a relationship with Darcy and maybe this could actually be a thing and then, oh, there you go. Stakes just went up and disaster struck, okay? That's kind of more what we're looking for. It has to be based in the internal and what the story's already about. Don't just throw a plot twist in for the sake of a plot twist, okay? So here's what I want you to think about. Number one, write this down or, you know, if you're driving or something, write it down when you get home. What is something that would make your character almost give up on what they're trying to accomplish? Okay, what could happen that could either make them think they absolutely cannot have that, they're not going to be able to do it, they're going to fail, and make them come really close to giving up on it, okay? And the secondary part of this, you know, use that as number one. Number two is how will they resolve to keep going? You need to have them come out of it and really at this point, maybe they realize that to move forward is more important than ever, okay? And so what could make that happen for them? What could um, you do in the story that would cause that for the character? All right, so when you sit down to journal about this, just start brainstorming. You know, what are they trying to accomplish and what could really throw a wrench in things for them and make them think that this is just not going to happen, I'm gonna fail at this, okay? So those are the first two things. The second two are more plot related. So these are just things, again, that I want you to journal on and brainstorm with. Number three, what is something they could lose? There should be a big, big loss in the third quarter of the story. Now, if you're writing something where a character is going to die, a beloved character, this is the place to do it, okay? If you're not writing that kind of story and, and your story doesn't include a character death, that's fine, but what else could they lose? What are their stakes? Could they lose a battle? Could they lose a fight? Could they lose information that they really, really needed, an object that's really pivotal to what they're trying to accomplish? Um, you know, it's gotta be some sort of massive loss it's got to it's got to really be an emotional loss you know even if it's just information that maybe they're not terribly um, emotionally connected to still there's a morale loss there like okay we thought we were doing really well and boom what are we gonna do now you know that's it's deflating and that's gonna be an emotional loss okay so think about what a big loss could be and this could be your plot twist if you want it to be but remember you just got to do it from the internal not just randomly throw a plot twist in there okay and number four, how could you integrate it to what you already have and what scenes can you build out around it? Okay, so let's say you come up with this great event that's going to happen. It's going to give your character a major emotional loss and it's going to make them think that they're going to have to give up on whatever you know it is that they're trying to get. So you've got it. You've got it down. Well, now you've got to create a sequence to get from the middle to that event and then from that event to your climactic moment, okay, or toward the ending, if you just want to call it that. Now, I would start with just, you know, doing really simple things. Okay, well, the character has to do this in order to do that. They've got to do, the, you know, this after this in order to get to there. Just like really simple. You don't have to make it really detailed at first. Just do a step-by-step -step process to get you from the middle to that big event, and then from the big event to the ending that you already have in mind, okay? And from there, you can build it out. You can make more detail. You can figure out where all your characters are going to be, and, you know, where the villain's going to fit in, and all of that, but you just need to come up with the sequence first, okay? So let's, um, let's talk about a couple of examples of where we might see this in popular mainstream stories, okay? In The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, I can tell you that the big event that happens in the th third quarter of the story is Gandalf's death. So it's the Balrog, which obviously is very high action, but it's not the high action that is important. It's not the high action that keeps people in the story. Yeah, that's exciting, but if it was high action just for the sake of high action, it would get boring really fast, okay? What keeps people emotionally connected to the story is the fact that they lose Gandalf, that we see the characters and how 
heavy a sense of loss they have over that. They're weeping. They're sobbing. They don't want to go on with their quest because this is such a huge loss for them. Okay, that's a really good example of how to get from the middle of the story toward the end. Okay. Um, let's look at While You Were Sleeping, which is a romance. Um, it's a little bit more low-key here, but that's exactly why I wanted to talk about this one, because it's not high action. What happens in the third quarter of the story is that she... Uh, I'm assuming you're all familiar with the story, right? She is kind of set through an accident, a misunderstanding to marry a particular guy, and she ends up falling for that guy's brother, okay? Three quarters of the way through the story, she is preparing for her wedding to the guy that she doesn't really love, but she flat out asks the guy that she is in love with if he can think of any reason that she should not marry his brother, and he says no. So it's a major rejection for her. She clearly was thinking, maybe he feels this way about me too, maybe I could just talk to him and then I would be able to be with the person I really want to be with and he totally deflates her by not you know saying anything and so she goes forward with, with the wedding all right so that is a romance it's a very low-key scene and then afterward we see her go talk to one of her friends about it and that's a very low-key scene but it's very emotional because when she talks to her friend about it who I think is her boss she cries and says he didn't want me okay so there's a lot of emotion in that scene but again it's not high action you could call it a plot twist but it's not again like some massive random let's just throw a plot twist in there okay it's based on what is already happening in the story and what is the worst thing that could happen to her at this point? Rejection from the man she actually is in love with and wants to be with. Okay. Um, I already talked about Pride and Prejudice a little bit. So I also wrote down Frozen. What's going on in Frozen? Well, in Frozen, about three quarters of the way through the story, she uh, thinks she knows how to solve everything. She has to get, you know, uh, an act of true love, which makes her think she needs to go back to Hans, who is waiting for her, and kiss him and make sure that he loves her, and that is what will save her kingdom, right? And so, first of all, we have her leaving... Kristoff, and that's actually kind of a, a bit of a, it works here for what's happening three quarters of the way through the story, because at this point, the audience knows that she's actually supposed to be with Kristoff and not Hans. She has the connection to him, and it seems like that's not going to happen. He drops her off and leaves, okay? So there's that, and the audience is going, wait a sec, wait a sec, no, no, it should be him, not the other guy. Okay, then when she tries to move forward with Hans, she finds out he was lying to her the whole time. He's actually evil. He locks her in the room, okay? So again, this is pretty much the worst thing that could have happened because she can't save her country now. And the man that she thought was in love with her is not. He was actually a total jerk, right? So this is what I'm talking about. You know, if if you're at the midpoint, figure out something that is like the worst thing that could happen to your character that's going to make them think they are not going to win this thing. They are not going to get what they've been striving for the entire story. And then just build out the sequence to go from the middle to that event and then from that event to the ending. Okay. And then of course, after that, you could add as much detail as you want. Keep writing, keep free writing. Um, just have tons of fun with it. Cause this is the kind of thing that's fun. Once things start to click and you know what you're doing, you get super excited. And then you're like, yeah, I know exactly the character is going to say this. And then you start imagining scenes in your head and you know, that's what you want to be at. Okay. Get rid of the block, <laughs> get to the creative flow. Right. Okay. So I did say at the beginning that I would also talk very briefly about the midpoint. Now, again, you um, if you have my 10 plot points PDF, this talks all about it, or if you want to go listen to that episode, the midpoint of the story, it often comes dead center of the story, but it doesn't have to chronologically, okay? So keep that in mind. But at the midpoint, something ought to change, okay? So they go from being acted upon in the first half of the story to being proactive. And it's usually because they get some sort of information, they learn something, they hatch a plan, okay? And so this is why... Um, this is such a useful exercise because at the midpoint, they basically should have some sort of plan for moving forward proactively to get what they want. Okay. So let's, again, let's look at Lord of the Rings. The first half of the movie, Frodo doesn't know what the heck's going on. Okay. He's being acted upon by outside sources. He's just running for his life for the most part, right? He gets hurt. He's like only half conscious. You know? <laughs> and then at the midpoint, we have the Council of Elrond where they literally hatch a plan for how they are going to move forward and destroy the ring. Now, because it's high fantasy, these things tend to be very literal in high fantasy, so that's very on the nose, it's very obvious. It doesn't have to be that obvious in your story. There just has to be a point where you, as the author, recognize that they are now moving forward proactively, okay? So if that's the point you're at, 
maybe part of the reason you're stuck is that you don't know exactly how they're gonna move forward proactively. Maybe you need to figure that out in your midpoint. And so if you look at the structure of the second half of the story, we have them hatching a plan to move forward, then three quarters of the way through, something has to really stomp all over that plan, okay? They have to get to the point where they're like, wow, this is not working, we're screwed, I'm not gonna be able to pull this off, okay? And then, of course, the ending is where you actually have the showdown between them and whatever your villainous or antagonistic force is. And beyond that, guys, it's just filling in the scenes, the sequence in between. Now, some of you may ask, well, can we have more than one event, more than one, you know, massive loss, plot twist sort of event? Of course, of course you can. If you go through high fantasies like Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter and, you know, a, a lot of them like that, there's tons of things. Like, people will actually disagree on what the major event is for the first half of the story, what the major event is for the second half of the story because there's more than one and that's fine totally if it fits into your story if it creates um, character de development then do that but as long as you have at least one the story will be able to move forward you will keep your readers attention and you will be able to figure out how to get from that midpoint to the end of the story okay so let's rehash real fast in order to get from the middle of your story where you might be stuck to the end first figure out your midpoint you should probably do that first how is the character gonna move forward from here proactively what sort of plan are they doing to preemptively achieve what their desires are in the story, okay? From there, you're gonna write down these four things and just relax your brain and brainstorm or free write about them, okay? Number one, what would make them decide to almost give up on that thing that they're after, okay? What would be so disheartening that they would decide, I can't do this, okay? Um, second, how would they resolve to keep going? So basically, how is that going to play out? How are they going to keep going? Because clearly, they have to keep going. Your story's not going to end there, right? Um, maybe keep in mind that they need to resolve that moving forward now is more important than ever, okay? Number three, what big loss could you give them in the plot, okay? What would have a huge emotional impact on them in a negative way. Either um, grief because they lost someone they cared about or maybe a loss of um, an object or knowledge that they, that they need in order to get what they desire or maybe just something that because they lost it is very disheartening and there's a loss of morale, okay? A loss of love, a loss of romance, whatever your story is about. Um, maybe close their own life, you know, maybe they get hurt really bad and now they don't know how they're going to have the physical strength to go on. Anything like that will work. Um, and then four, you're going to brainstorm how you can build out scenes around it, meaning come up with a sequence from the middle to that event and then from that event to the end. Okay? So that is what I have for you today, and I hope that helps you get unstuck and figure out the second half of your story. This is a question I've been getting a lot lately. All right, guys. Thanks for listening today. Have a wonderful week of story crafting, And remember, there is always a market for awesome.